So in the previous video, we talked about what exactly the resting membrane potential is. Okay, we looked at the structure of the axon. And then I also mentioned that before we are able to send action potentials or electric nerve impulses, the axon has to first create and maintain a resting membrane potential. And how do we do that? It is done by using the sodium ion potassium ion pump, where when it receives ATP, the pump will carry out active transport, and every time it does its function, it will transport out three sodium ions and transport in two potassium ions against the concentration gradient, and thus it creates, and also the inside of the axon has some negatively charged proteins to make the voltage inside more negative than the voltage outside. That's how you create the resting membrane potential, and the value of the resting membrane potential is negative 70 millivolts. Now, resting membrane potentials may differ de depending on species, okay? The next thing that is actually supposed to happen, I told you, was something to do with action potential. And I said that the action potential has two parts, where when A gets stimulated, the charge will flip where inside becomes positive and the outside becomes negative, but that only happens for a brief moment, and then it returns back to normal. That rapid change and returning back to normal is called the action potential, and it's split into two stages, depolarization and repolarization. So we're going to look at that uh, process in detail. So depolarization is very simple. Now, what exactly happens during depolarization? It is basically when the membrane potential from negative 70 becomes positive 30 millivolts, right? So remember, first, again, I'm just repeating myself again, to create the resting membrane potential, the pump has to work, it receives ATP, three sodium ions go out, two potassium ions are pumped in. I keep repeating myself because I need to drive this home, because this is an extremely complicated chapter where a lot of things are happening. Right, so we have with this process we have created the resting membrane potential as I've circled over there negative 70 millivolts. All good. And remember, I also told you by the pump doing this process, it creates a gradient where there is a higher sodium ion concentration outside, lower sodium ion concentration inside, and for potassium ions, it's the opposite higher inside, lower outside. Right, so this has been done now. Remember also, the pump is not the only thing that is found on the axon's cell surface membrane. There were also two other things. There was the voltage-gated sodium ion channels and the voltage-gated potassium ion channels, right? So, for this process over here, we are only going to focus on the voltage-gated sodium ion channel first, because we are talking about depolarization. Now, during depolarization, what exactly happens is as follows. The axon gets stimulated, and I just want you to see what happens. When the axon gets stimulated, the voltage-gated sodium ion channels open. Now, what is the consequence when the channel protein opens, when the sodium ion channel protein opens? You might be thinking, hmm, I'm not so sure, but look at the concentration of the sodium ion outside and inside the axon. So it's quite obvious, facilitated diffusion will happen where sodium ions will rush in. So during depolarization, the voltage-gated sodium ion channels open and the sodium ions rush into the axon. Why do they rush into the axon? Because they are rushing down the concentration gradient from high to low. That's how they're supposed to work. Now, as sodium ion continues going in, the inside starts to become a bit more positive, right? Because sodium ion is a positive ion. So from negative 70 millivolts, it becomes negative 50. And as more sodium ions keeps going in, it goes up to positive 30 millivolts. That's how you achieve that membrane potential of positive 30 millivolts right there. Because sodium ions rushed into the axon. And remember, the sodium ion channel is a voltage-gated channel, right? And the reason why it's important is because, and of course, when voltage, what does voltage gated mean? Voltage gated means it opens and closes at specific voltages. When the, the channel, when the voltage reaches positive 30 millivolts, which means the inside is more positive than the outside, the channel will close. The channel specifically closes at around positive 30 millivolts. And thus, because the inside has a higher voltage than the outside, the charge flips. There you go. 
that's how you get the positive symbols inside and the negative symbols outside. Simple as that. So at 30 millivolts, at positive 30 millivolts, the voltage gated sodium ion channels close. And that's basically it. Okay, so let's do this again. Okay, so at first, to create the resting membrane potential, the pump will actively transport out three sodium ions and transport in two potassium ions. This creates the resting membrane potential where the inside has a lower voltage than the outside. Therefore, inside is negative, outside is positive. And during depolarization, what exactly happens? The voltage-gated sodium ion channels open due to the stimulus and sodium ions rush in. Down the concentration gradient, the inside now has a higher voltage represented by positive inside and negative outside. This is how depolarization works. And of course, without wasting time, let's immediately go into repolarization. What happens during repolarization? The charge has to return back to normal. But if you notice, I put the value not at negative 70 millivolts, at negative 80 millivolts. So let's. So it goes back where the charge flips back again. Where during depolarization, positive inside, negative outside. But during repolarization, it flips back again. Because I told you, action potential is a rapid change. It happens for a very short amount of time. Right? So how does that happen? How does repolarization happen? So remember, let's do the entire damn thing again, okay? I know it's annoying, but it helps, okay? How do we create the resting membrane potential? We do it using the sodium ion potassium ion pump, active transport, three sodium ion out, two potassium ions in continuously, and during depolarization, the voltage-gated sodium ion channels open, so sodium ions rush in. Why do the sodium ions rush in? Because it's higher outside and lower inside. That's what makes the charge inside more positive and the outside negative, right? Where the inside is higher voltage anyway. So that creates the positive 30 millivolts. Now, this is where we have to talk about the voltage-gated potassium ion channel. So this is where we introduced the third transport protein. Earlier, as depolarization was happening, the sodium ion channel was open, but the potassium ion channel was closed. But the moment it reaches positive 30 millivolts, what's supposed to happen, by the way? Yes, once the membrane reaches positive 30 millivolts, I told you that the voltage-gated sodium ion channel closes, as you can see that. So it has closed. Good. But at positive 30 millivolts also, the voltage-gated potassium ion channels open. So what's the consequence if the voltage-gated potassium ion channels open? Exactly. Compare the potassium ion concentration inside the axon and outside the axon. The potassium ions are represented in those green triangles. You notice that there is a higher potassium ion concentration in the axon, and lower outside, so potassium ions rush out. And as potassium ion rushes out, the axon loses positive ions, and when the so the outside starts to become more positive. And when the outside becomes more positive, the inside is a lower voltage by comparison, so it becomes negative. And as potassium ions continue rushing out, it becomes about negative 80 millivolts. You don't have to memorize negative 80 millivolts, but you just have to know that in its attempt to return back to the resting potential, it overshoots the resting potential. So it goes beyond that and becomes more negative than it was supposed to be. So it goes slightly beyond the resting potential. And once it reaches about negative 80 millivolts, give or take, the voltage-gated potassium ion channels will then close. And thus, we are actually done with depolarization and repolarization. If you're still not so sure, let's do this again. So remember, at that section of the axon, I told you that before we are supposed to send the impulse, the inside has to be represented with a negative symbol. Outside is positive, which means inside has a lower voltage, negative 70 millivolts. How do we create that resting membrane potential? That is created using the sodium ion potassium ion pump, okay, represented over here. When the axon is stimulated, the charge flips, where the inside becomes more positive and the outside is negative. How did that happen? That was because the voltage-gated sodium ion channels open, and therefore sodium ion rushes into the cell down the concentration gradient. This is known as depolarization. And once it reaches positive 30 millivolts, 
the sodium ion channel closes and the voltage gated potassium ion channels open and potassium ions rush out down the concentration gradient as well because the inside had a higher potassium ion concentration and the outside is lower and thus the charge flips back okay becoming negative 80 millivolts where the inside is now negative and the outside is positive by comparison this is how the action potential takes place the action potential basically consists of just depolarization and repolarization so i hope you understand that